For some, this is an enjoyable part of the meal or the best part of the meal is their after dinner espresso or whether they're having a cappuccino and creating great quality espresso doesn't happen by accident. A lot of factors go into it. But let's talk about the basic of how to tamper, how to once the coffee grinds get in there, how much are we pushing down, um, distributing it evenly. Let's talk about that and do a little side by side comparison of the different size uh, pounds of pressure. And we're going to let the experts do it over at Clive Coffee. So let's jump into uh, their video right now. Tamping is one of the core skills involved in pulling espresso, but there's a lot of myth and conflicting opinions about the proper way to do it. In reality, it's really simple. So I'm going to break the information down into two categories, what matters and what doesn't. If there's one thing that matters most when tamping, it's that you keep things level. This is because we want the water coming from the group head to flow through all the grounds at the same rate. If I tamp at an angle like this, the side that got pressed down further will allow water to flow through much faster because there's much less coffee on that side. This means that by the end of our shot, that side will be over extracted while the other side is under extracted. This example is exaggerated, but even a tamp that's slightly off will have this same effect if to a lesser degree. By tamping nice and flat, we can make sure the whole puck is evenly extracted. The other thing that matters happens just before you tamp, distribution. If I load up my portafilter with all the grounds falling at the back and then go straight into tamping, there's going to be much less coffee at the front. Even if we keep the tamp level, this will cause the same problem we saw before. The front half will flow faster, the back slower, and we get a muddy, uneven extraction. To avoid this, we recommend moving your portafilter in concentric circles while you grind, or at least ensuring that your grinder is set up so that the grounds fall right in the middle. This will help ensure that the coffee is evenly spread throughout the basket. Even better, use a distribution tool, like the wedge from St. Anthony Industries. By giving this a couple spins, I can make sure that the grounds are spread super evenly before I tamp. Tamping force, however, doesn't matter. In some circles, that could be considered controversial, but in practice, it's really easy to prove. Here we pulled five shots, tamping with different amounts of force, ranging from 40 pounds down to five pounds. As you can see, the shots all pull about the same, and our yield and shot time are all very close together. You'll often hear that 30 pounds of force is correct, but in reality, the strength of your tamp will have very little effect on your shot, so don't dwell on it. This isn't to say tamping is pointless, if you don't tamp at all, you might hit your target, but you're going to notice much more channeling. You'd also get your group head and shower screen much dirtier thanks to the swirling mess of coffee inside your portafilter basket. Thank you, Charles. Charles from Clive Coffee. He made that look so easy, didn't he? So some great pointers there, and hopefully that helps you, or that will help you, make a great shot of espresso. Thanks for tuning in.